In this video, I want to talk about points of inflection. Points of inflection are another set of key points that you will find on nonlinear graphs. And we're going to do that through looking at a cubic function. Um, but the theory applies to all nonlinear graphs, which might, might or might not have points of inflection, inflection, just as they might or might not have maximum and minimum points. Um, so this is a fairly uh, normal positive cubic graph. It follows a fairly normal shape. Not all cubic graphs will look like this, um, but this particular graph has um, a local maximum here and a local minimum here. As I said, not all graphs have maximum and minimum points, um, but this one does. Um, and of course, these are stationary points, the maximum and minimum points. Um, so we know that the uh, derivative, I'm going to write that as dy by dx, the derivative here is zero. And similarly, the derivative here is zero. And in between those stationary points where the graph has a gradient of zero, we have the graph with a positive gradient on the left hand side, a negative gradient between the maximum and the minimum, and then a positive gradient again on the right hand side. So if we just highlight that, we'll find that the gradient here is positive and the gradient here is positive. And then the gradient here is negative. And if we label that up with our um, dy by dx value, so dy by dx here, the gradient is positive. The graph is increasing. dy by dx is greater than zero. Similarly here, the graph is increasing. So dy by dx is greater than zero. And in this interval, the graph is decreasing. So the gradient is negative dy by dx is less than zero. What we want to do now, though, is explore this area in the middle where the graph is decreasing. And we're going to look a little bit about how the gradient is changing in that interval. To help us understand what's meant by point of inflection, I've just taken snippets of the graph around the local maximum point and the local minimum point. And what you can see is around the local maximum point, we have a hill shape. So um, if we talk about this as being a hill, what we actually mean mathematically is it is concave downwards. OK, and then around the minimum point, we have a valley shape, which can be described correctly in mathematical terms as being concave upwards. The point of inflection is the point on this decreasing part of the function where the graph switches from being concave downwards to being concave upwards. And we're going to see how to work or how to see that visually and then how to calculate it algebraically. Let's switch back to the graph now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the tangent to the curve on at various points of this graph so that we can see what's going on with the gradient. So I'm going to plot a point A, which you'll see has appeared in the um, bottom left corner of the screen here on our graph. And I'm going to plot the tangent line to point A so we can see a little bit more clearly what's going on with the gradient. So as you can see on this imp increasing part of the graph, the gradient is positive. As we move up the graph, the gradient stays positive, but it's becoming less steep. So the gradient itself is decreasing. The graph is increasing. That means the gradient is positive. The tangent line still has a positive gradient, but the gradient is decreasing. The positive gradient is getting less and less. And as we get to the turning point, the, the maximum point here, we'll see that the gradient eventually becomes zero. And then as we move past, the gradient becomes negative. The gradient is still decreasing. It is becoming more and more negative. The graph in this region is getting more steeply negative. Okay. As we move down the graph, the gradient now seems not to be changing very much. On this part of the graph, the gradient seems to be staying fairly constant. It's not actually. It is changing a little bit, but not by very much, not so much that we can see. And now we get to a point where the gradient is starting to increase. The gradient is still negative, but it's becoming less negative. It's increasing 
until it gets to zero at the minimum point and becomes positive. So what we're looking at with the point of inflection is this point where we switch from the gradient is negative here but is getting more negative, it's decreasing, to the point where it's still negative but the gradient is starting to increase now. Where's the point where the gradient goes from a, it's not just a decreasing function, it's a decreasing gradient to being still a decreasing function but an increasing gradient. And that point is the point of inflection. So now let's explore this graph and its gradient function. So we have the original graph here plotted in blue, which is the graph of f of x. We're now going to look at what the gradient function looks like, the graph of f prime x. So I've switched from dy by dx notation to function notation here. So what's the gradient of this graph look like? Well, we know we have a maximum point here and a minimum point here. So at those points, we know that the gradient must be zero. So these are the zeros of the gradient function. We also know that to the left of the maximum point and to the right of the minimum point, the graph, the original graph, is increasing. Therefore, the gradient is positive. So our graph must be like that. And we know that between the maximum and minimum point, the original function is decreasing, therefore the gradient is negative, so we know the graph looks like that. Now, because the original function was a cubic, when you differentiate a cubic, we end up with a quadratic, so we know that our um, gradient function will indeed be a quadratic. And it looks something like this. The point of inflection is the point where the gradient switches from being negative and uh, decreasing to still being negative but increasing and that point is the stationary point here it's the local minimum is in fact an actual minimum it's the local minimum on the graph of f prime x so how do we find the local minimum well to find the local minimum we differentiate and set it equal to zero so we now have to differentiate f prime x and if we differentiate it that gives us f double prime x and we put it equal to zero and that gives us our point of inflection or it gives us the x coordinate of our point of inflection and that is algebraically how you find the point of inflection we'll look at an example next um, but that's how we would do it in this case now some of you might realize that because the graph of f prime x gradient function is a quadratic, the minimum point here is midway between the two zeros. So that means that the point of inflection on the cubic is midway between the maximum and the minimum point. This works for cubic graphs, but it doesn't always work. Points of inflection are not always the midpoint between the nearest local maximum and local minimum point, but it does work in a cubic graph. We also know that the line of symmetry of a quadratic is given as x is negative b over 2a, where a and b are the coefficient of x squared and x in the quadratic uh, equation, the original quadratic function. Um, so you might like to explore how, if we have um, a cubic function, how we can determine what the coordinates of the point of inflection are we can generalize that without actually having to go through the process of calculating each individual um, f prime x, the derived function, and the f double prime x, the second derivative, to find the point of inflection. It will only work for cubic functions, but it's a good exercise there. Okay, so we'll have a look at a, an application in practice with a cubic function to find a point of inflection. So the final stage now is to just look at uh, an example of finding a point of inflection. So I have here uh, the graph f of x is x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. Um, so to find the point of inflection, we have to differentiate that twice. So first of all, we find f prime x, which is 3x squared minus 6x by differentiating f of x. Uh, 
Then we differentiate again, get the second derivative, and that gives us 6x minus 6. So to find the point of inflection, we have to put the second derivative equal to 0. So that gives us 6x minus 6 equals 0, which we can see gives x equals 1. So that's the x-coordinate. To find the y-coordinate, well, if x equals 1, y is f of 1. So we'll put 1 back into our original function, which is 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 squared plus 4. 1 minus 3 plus 4 equals 2. So the coordinates of our point of inflection are 1, 2. And that point on the graph is there, midway between the maximum and the minimum point. That's true, remember, for cubic functions, but it's not true generally for functions. It's only true in, in general for a cubic function.